Hello, everybody. First of all, welcome to this G-Local session on harnessing the power of synthesis to accelerate progress in the decade of action, hosted by the Global SDG Synthesis Coalition. Uh, I hope you're all in the right place in the right session. Uh, my name is Kerry Albright. I'm a Deputy Director and Principal Advisor of Evaluation at UNICEF. My name is uh, Shiv Bukranya, and I'm Evaluation Specialist at UNDP's uh, independent evaluation office and I work specifically on synthesis and um, work uh, uh, quite a lot of my work is focused on the SDG coalition. Carrie when she comes back and let me just move the slide along so you can see who is going to be part of this panel. So Carrie Albright is the deputy director principal advisor of UNICEF's evaluation office and is a co-lead of the coalition. Um, and we're joined here by some very interesting and eminent panelists who can speak to the topic of today's session on harnessing the power of synthesis to accelerate um, progress towards a decade of action. So we have Daniel Ortega, who's the Director of Development Contributions and Impact Evaluation at CAS. Uh, we have Claudia Maldonado, who's a Congress member of Conneval, and we have uh, Kasem El Sadiq, who's a learning and evaluation practitioner and lots of experience in terms of evaluating um, SDGs. So we have a really interesting panel here today who can talk to the topics of um, the, the value and the importance of synthesis in providing evidence for progressing on the SDGs um, and also talk to points on how we can best ensure that findings and lessons from synthesis are taken up by different stakeholders out there and as well, and how they can be used in national and local contexts. So that's the focus of the session today. In terms of the agenda, um, well, we've done the opening. Um, after this, uh, we'll be doing a quick overview on the Global SDG Synthesis Coalition, just to tell you a bit more about what the coalition is, what we're doing, and, and why we think it's important. And then we'll progress, uh, proceed with a panel discussion uh, around some of the key points I mentioned um, previously, um, and we'll have an interesting discussion. Um, we'll open it up to questions and answers with you, uh, and then hopefully we'll close, well, we'll definitely close uh, before the end of the hour. Um, so with that, I'll move on um, to talking a bit more about the SDG Synthesis Coalition. Um, so as I said, I wanted to tell you a bit about what the coalition is, what our objectives are, um, what we're doing and why we think it's important. And I also wanted to say a little bit about why we think synthesis is important as well. Um, operating under the assumption that we're speaking to an evaluation audience here, we wanted to make um, a point on, on, on synthesis specifically. So the SDG coalition, um, is a, a real ambitious undertaking. Um, it's an in, interagency undertaking. Um, and what we're trying to do is make a substantial contribution to accelerate the sustainable de development goals. And we're trying to do this through um, producing five syntheses aligned to the five pillars under the SDGs. Um, so there's a planet, people, prosperity, peace, and partnership. And as part of this synthesis, what we're doing is collating evidence from impact evaluations, uh, from uh, the evaluations produced by UN agencies and other multi and bilateral agencies, and also looking at voluntary national reports. And the idea is to produce syntheses under these five pillars um, to produce lessons and findings that can help uh, inform decision making on the SDGs. So we're trying to produce robust evidence of what has worked, why and where in key areas under the SDGs. Uh, these will produce key insights on barriers and enablers to accelerate achievements. And these will uh, result in lessons, use, use, usable, accessible and actionable lessons on how we can achieve the SDGs. So what makes the SDG Synthesis Coalition so there's a lot of synthesis activity among US, UN agencies, lots of different UN agencies and entities are involved in synthesizing 
their evaluative evidence. But this really is an unprecedented interagency multi-partner initiative. It's a coming together of over 41 different UN entities, uh, many member states, various multi and bilateral organizations, as well as private sector, sector and evaluation synthesis networks. It really is a coalition across all of these partners uh, working towards the objectives that I just talked about. Um, there's a, there's a multi-level governance structure for the coalition. So there's an overarching high-level steering committee, uh, which is made up of high-level high ministerial um, members. There are management groups and te technical advisory panels for each pillar, each of the five pillars. So the management groups are involved in, well, managing the synthesis, working with the synthesis teams, ensuring quality and ensuring delivery and helping with the uptake of the syntheses and technical advisory panels are made up of subject and methods experts for each pillar. The coalition is co-led by UNDP's Independent Evaluation Office and UNICEF's Evaluation Office and the Secretariat is based at the uh, UNDP's uh, Independent Evaluation Office. So I just wanted to talk a bit about what is synthesis. So a very simple definition of synthesis is there on the screen. So it's the process of bringing together information and knowledge from a range of sources to inform debates and decisions on specific issues or research questions. So that's a bit of a mouthful, but that's a very simple um, definition of synthesis. And there are a few principles underlying synthesis. One is that um, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. So a key principle is, of synthesis is bringing together evidence from multiple sources rather than basing decisions on single studies. That's really important issue underlying synthesis. Um, the approach we take to synthesis is systematic, transparent, and, and explicit. And what we do is we search, we decide on what evidence is relevant, we quality appraise it, and then we try to extract the relevant data uh, from those studies. So in doing this, we hope that we're minimizing bias. And by bringing together all of this evidence, we're collating it, we're making it accessible, especially to people who don't have time to read hundreds of different evaluations or studies. Um, we're trying to bring it all together, make it accessible and understandable so it can be used in decision making. So why is it important? Why is it important that we have a coalition synthesizing evidence on the SDGs? Well, firstly, um, there's an urgency uh, or a request from member states that UN agencies could work together. There's so much evidence out there um, in evaluations and, and, and elsewhere that we can, um, that we can take, uh, collate, synthesize, and uh, draw out the lessons and findings. Um, so it's really important that as a coalition, it's an entity bringing together all of these different UN agencies and different partners. There's an urgency because we're halfway to the stated deadline of 2030 to achieve the SDG targets. And because we're taking this rigorous systematic approach to synthesis, um, it's really important because we hope that results in justifiable claims that can help facilitate evidence-informed decisions towards accelerating the SDGs. So I wanted to put up a few examples of synthesis here. So as I mentioned, many UN agencies produce synthesis. Um, there are a couple of examples here on the screen. So there's a, a, an evaluation synthesis from UNESCO on SDG 4.5, which has been published. There's another one there from UNICEF Evaluation Office on SDG 6. I also wanted to show an example of an evidence gap map as a different synthesis product. So this is not a long report, but this is a visual mapping of the evidence. So what evidence gap maps do is show you how much evidence exists on a particular topic or theme. Evidence gap maps are usually organized by um, uh, as a matrix where you have interventions on the vertical axis and outcomes on the horizontal axis. Uh, axis. And the individual cells show you how much evidence exists on those particular intervention outcome combinations. So these are really useful knowledge management tools, and they can be really useful for helping to set uh, research agendas because they show where evidence is 
and where the gaps are. This is an example of an evidence gap map produced by the Campbell co Collaboration on Youth Employment and Skills Interventions, and there's many more on many different topics out there. And then I just wanted to show you an example of an evidence portal. So synth synthesis is part of a spectrum uh, where we're trying to work towards brokering and translating evidence so that it can be understandable. So what these portals do is provide a visual representation of the effectiveness of, and impact of different interventions. It provides a very user-friendly um, visualization of you know effectiveness of different approaches and interventions this is a really well-known example from the education endowment foundation and you can see here on screen that it lists lots of different education interventions and you can see visually um you know how much impact uh, those individual interventions have made and all of this draws from synthesis okay so at this point i'll stop sharing my screen and maybe hand back to Kerry if she's back online. Thomas, do we know if Kerry's back online? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I see her. Kerry, can you, to you, Kerry. Yes, perfect. Can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me, good, okay. Major problems with the internet in the office today. Many apologies uh, to everybody for that. Um, have the panelists been introduced? Otherwise, I will quickly introduce people now. I did introduce the panelists. Um... I think uh, we're having further technical issues. You can't hear me. You're freezing up a little, Kerry. Okay, so let me let me start and um, trying to ask our panelists the questions we have. And if for any reason um, it's problematic, then hopefully Thomas can can take over. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, quickly react to, to what you've heard. So you've just heard this overview from Shiv and maybe uh, to share some of your initial thoughts about what was presented on the uh, SDG Synthesis Coalition. So uh, Claudia, I'll go to you first. Hi, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the organizers for this, the invitation for this very interesting conversation. Um, I have been working in the promotion of evidence for policy making and monitoring and evaluation systems in the global south. And I really believe this is a, a, one of the most innovative, ambitious and visionary initiatives I have seen in the field. It offers a unique and timely opportunity to have a post 2030 agenda and to have uh, accelerated action during the last mile. And it offers the possibility and the vision for a high level dialogue in international development that is actually anchored in a common pool of evidence and knowledge to advance inclusive development for all. We know that fragmentation and underutilization is a big problem with evaluative evidence. And this is a, a, a solution, a proposal that I think is promising to uh, fix this uh, fundamental problem. Thanks very much, Claudia. Uh, let me turn now to uh, Daniel. Thank you. Well, first of all, also thank uh, the organizers for the invitation uh, and congratulate uh, SHIP on a um, um, very good presentation, very clear on what the initiative is about. And I agree with, uh, with Claudia wholeheartedly about um, the importance that <clears throat> this initiative has and, the, um, and how great an effort it is to bring the evidence to bear on key decisions um, uh, for all governments around the globe. And uh, I think this will serve and serves a great um, educational uh, purpose as well if, for people about you know, what uh, constitutes good evidence and what is not. So curating the evidence uh, and going through this process, I think is, is, uh, is a very good um, yeah, initiative very helpful. Um, it will also, uh, I think, <clears throat> it should also help to, uh, to some extent, align the incentives um, of politicians, possibly, yeah. by uh, bringing the evidence more um, to a more significant role in, the, um, uh, in influencing the public debate. 
And so this way, the evidence can become more prevalent in the discussion, in the public discussion, and also um, uh, therefore align uh, political incentives. So, so I think this is a this is a really significant um, initiative, and I'm uh, very excited about it. Okay, I think we're still having uh, problems with Kerry uh, at the moment. So. Kerry, unless you can come back online, I'm going to pass it over to Kassem for uh, reactions to, to that initial presentation, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shiv. And uh, sorry for uh, Kerry. She, um, I mean, she put a lot of effort behind uh, uh, this uh, webinar, and I hope she can connect quickly. Uh, quickly on the on as a quick reaction, I think um, it's uh, it's a very interesting, and uh, despite the fact that it would be challenging, uh, the interest stems from the fact that we've been uh, uh, we we exited from the MDGs with an aspiration, uh, uh, which is the 2030 agenda, and we've been trying uh, and so hard till today uh, to provide more or less an integrated approach to evaluating or to presenting the progress on the SDGs. Um, it has been a bumpy process, uh, and I think the the coalition uh, would be a very interesting um, uh, entry to provide more of an integrated um, uh, assessment uh, on, on the progress so far, and hopefully on the results uh, from the from the SDGs. The second interest point, I think, it, uh, that it coincides literally uh, halfway through the uh, MDG through the Agenda 2030. I think that is. Um, um, a very uh, opportunistic in a sense that it would provide us with a with a lever for um, kind of mid term evaluation allow me to use my evaluative uh, hat always um, that would uh, trigger further um, uh, examination of the interlinkages as well as provide some of the insights to the national level regional and global level thanks kasem i'll continue in my substitute role so if you Encouraging words there about the coalition, but we're not just trying to congratulate ourselves. There are many challenges ahead as well as opportunities. Um, but thanks for those overall remarks. So we're going to ask some specific questions uh, to the panel now before we open it up a bit later for discussion. Um, so the first question goes to Claudia. So Claudia, where do you see the particular value of synthesis in informing Agenda 2030? and accelerating progress towards the SDGs? And what do you think are the main opportunities as well as risks and challenges involved? You're muted, Claudia. Hi, Mike, I, I have apologies. I really believe that uh, to fulfill its mission, evaluative evidence must be a global uh, public good. And it must create a common and widely shared knowledge pool to accelerate learning and progress towards the SDG. I think the the synthesis effort is a step, a right, the right step in this direction. The value for the 2030 agenda and beyond is not only the unprecedented knowledge product that it will uh, generate with rigor, transparency, and an overarching uh, question that has high level decision-making implications. I think there is also a fundamental value in the piloting experience of horizontal collaboration, shared, shared resources, information, and an open policy dialogue between organizations to achieve this goal. Working, learning, and decision-making in silos or within bureaucratic boundaries or territorial concerns is not going to help us solve the challenges of our time. For this reason, I believe that this coalition can be seen as a first trial for the construction of open network-based governance models for effective development. And of course, to, pro to prompt shared action. This is, like I said, tremendously ambitious, not risk-free or easy, but definitely a step in the right direction. Thanks, Claudia. A, a few important keywords there in terms of horizontal collaboration and shared action. I think that's what we're trying to do. Also, also understanding the complexities and risks of that. Did you want to come back, back in, Claudia? Sorry, I forgot to mention the, the risks. Um, there are important um, methodological risks that can affect the credibility of the of the product. There are important collaboration risks that uh, re that entail the the, um, the the different incentives that the coalition participants can have, and there is of course the risk that this information does not step out on time with the adequate level and uh, um, spectrum of stakeholders and is not sufficiently utilized. I will stop there. 
Thanks, Claudia. There's a very real risk that we're aware of. It's useful to see if there are any comments back from any any of the participants on 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 the risks and challenges in particular. Um, thank you for those comments. So the next question is directed to Daniel. So Daniel, how does evidence synthesis help in translating evidence from one context to the other? If 80% of studies come from the global north, in terms of all of those studies that are published out there in the public domain, we know that most of them are focused uh, or are produced in the global north. So how is that relevant for a country from the south? So this is a question about transferability uh, from one context to the other. Over to you, Daniel. <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Shiv. Um, well, let me start by saying that uh, quality evidence synthesis, systematic uh, reviews, uh, for example, are you know provide the lay of the land, uh, so to speak, on a given topic. But that picture is um, can and it quite often is, as Shiv just uh, said in his question, uh, biased in that it you know comes it emerges from a body of work that is you know, that is either geographically focused or otherwise focused so um so it so that focus might not necessarily fit your context and this is so one uh, simple example is you know teacher incentives for example you're looking at teacher incentives uh, and all the studies come from private school just just suppose that that's the case and you're in a public school context so does that transfer um uh it, linearly like those those uh, findings so uh when we you know in our evaluative work we learned that internal validity is essential for credibility in our in our studies but uh and external validity is um oftentimes um close to impossible <laughs> so was, this is kind of the our mantra in evaluation often and so i, I think that uh, as some you know once a police officer uh, in the UK once told me when discussing statistical power that for him, 70% uh, chance of being right or 80% chance of being right uh, was much better than 50-50. So the 95% um, threshold that we set for, ourse for ourselves in academia is, 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 is that, you know, so it's the, the view from a policymaker's perspective is not necessarily the same as that from an academic uh, standpoint. Um, so, so I think the discussion is whether we have uh, uh, something to learn about the mechanisms that are at work in evaluative work um, that might translate elsewhere. So for example, if t teacher incentives uh, in private schools may work better if they are paired, for example, with non-monetary incentives. And this uh, might suggest that recognition is really important. So this speaks to the mechanism through which a particular intervention might work. And so this might, does this teach you something about the value of recognition in your context? Um, so, so I think that that's the kind of, uh, of, of thing that, that, um, that we might be, hoping to look for in these uh, uh, in these studies and the, and, and the, the value, the, the way that you can transfer one uh, study from you know, from, from one context to another is is essentially, uh, in my view, to look for mechanisms that might also um, uh, exist and, and, and apply into, into a different context. So I'll, I'll stop there and and um, leave room for more comments and questions. Thanks, Daniel, and congratulations for trying to cover external validity in two minutes. Um, so a couple of points just to take out from what Daniel just said there. So this, this issue, I mean, I think it's often an issue with synthesis and especially what we're trying to do at the coalition, right? Which is focused on the different SDG pillars. Each pillar covers a, a massive scope in its own right. Some of these pillars cover five different SDGs. So we're trying to synthesize evidence on these SDGs at the global level. And how can we make the findings relevant to different contexts? It's a real challenge for us, for the coalition and for what we're trying to do. 
And I think some of the things that Daniel mentioned are really important to take into consideration. And, and, and this point about let's not be, be uh, let perfect be the enemy of good stop us and at least trying, I think, is a really important one. I think it's a, a useful segue to the next question, because I think part of the answer is about how these findings are used and taken up in national and local context. Perhaps that's part of the answer in terms of contextualization and transferability. So the next question uh, relates to that and is directed towards Kassim. Um, it ties into what Daniel, Daniel just said. So since the coalition has recently launched, what would you like to see built into the different pillar syntheses right from the beginning that would help the uptake and use of findings at the national level? Over to you, Kassim. Uh, thanks, Shiv. Uh, I think four, uh, probably four things that I thought of might be um, uh, worth to look at and consider in, uh, in order to ensure an uptake at the national and probably at the regional level. One is literally accounting for the contextual uh, uh, issues and contextual dynamics and uh, contextual, uh, contextual issues that uh, prevails in different um, uh, countries. Um, the integration or uh, accounting for uh, um, the SDGs along with uh, the, the implication of national disasters, the implications of uh, uh, armed conflicts, humanitarian crises, um, uh, other issues uh, related to um, uh, landlocked countries. I mean, these are specific issues, but also they, they are shareable among different uh, uh, countries in different parts of the world. Um, by 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 this I mean uh, obviously um, to um, to account and to consider for those uh, sub similarities probably um, when conducting a synthesis because that would ensure uh, to a large extent an uptake at the level of those uh, national governments. A second point is um, uh, literally. Um, I mean, coinciding it uh, with the mid-review of the Agenda 2030, uh, so far we've been uh, struggling in order to provide uh, more or less uh, an idea of the progress. Where do we stand in, in terms of achieving those uh, the uh, those SDGs? Um, and I very much look forward to uh, uh, to having this opportunity, uh, 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 I mean, with the synthesis uh, to be well, uh, rapid in a sense uh, that it becomes opportune to provide um, um, uh, uh, answers to uh, very important questions. A third uh, would, would be related to um, engaging stakeholders uh, at, at different levels. Um, and in terms of the uptake, uh, obviously that has to do with not only the uh, uh, national governments and policymakers, but also underneath the commissioners of evaluations for them to learn probably and to adapt the new um, commissioning of uh, uh, SDG related evaluations to be more or less um, based or learning from the uh, synthesis, let alone evaluators and the evaluation community. Um, and finally, uh, I think uh, it, it is pertinent for us also to uh, make use of the synthesis in order to influence the, uh, the standalone process that has been established since 2015, the VNR process. The VNR process is an interesting one. It's a delicate one. It's a political one, a bit of technical, yes, but it, it, it has to be more or less, um, uh, it is based on evidence, uh, on, on um, evaluative evidence to, to some extent, but I mean, we all uh, agree that it needs to be much more um, ingrained in, in, in what we call the country-led evaluations, uh, and this is why at the end of the day, a couple of uh, days ago, we got this uh, uh, endorsement and the adoption of the new UN, UN resolution calling for, for more of a, an evaluative evidence within the VNRs uh, based on counter -led evaluations. So I think the synthesis would be literally opportune in order to, um, to give us some insights into, and, and help moving into that direction. Thanks, Kasim. I think you highlight, highlighted some important points there about transferability and uptake. Um, so what I take from what you just said is that, you know, in these synthesis, we're going to be covering evidence from many different contexts, some of which are comparable. And part of the answer is looking at that comparability uh, in findings in contexts which may, may share some contextual similarities. So part of the answer is there. And part of the answer is about targeting certain stakeholders in different contexts. You mentioned, uh, you know, actually looking at commissioners of evaluate, evaluations, which is something that we might miss out in the detail of sort of planning uh, these 
these uh, syntheses of, of this nature. And you also talked about the, the voluntary national report process um, um, uh, and, and the need for those to be increasingly based on evaluative evidence. And maybe there's a mutual kind of learning that can happen because part of these syntheses, at least in the partnerships pillar synthesis, which is ongoing, is an analysis of, of, of voluntary national reports to be considered in the whole along with the other sources of evidence. So perhaps some learning will come out of the synthesis and there, there can be some mutual exchange with those pen holders of voluntary national reports. Um, and, and there will be opportunities for that coming up. Um, so thank you, Kasem. Okay, so the next question is directed to Claudia. And, and again, we're progressing on the line of how we can make these syntheses useful. So Claudia, beyond the eventual findings, what tools and resources would be most useful to local stakeholders, policymakers, and evaluation commissioners? Well, I think findings themselves are instrumental and are very important, but there's also a lot of added value in the actual process of collaborative joint action. There can be a demonstration effect in the methodological choices and the, the methodological path that is taking to produce these, uh, these findings that has uh, enormous learning potential for others. I think the process in itself, the collaboration, sharing questions, exchanging information, sharing resources, and trying to uh, answer higher level or higher order questions also have a very important evaluation capacity building potential. This could um, ideally uh, open new pathways for an open learning international development environment. And this is, like I said, not a, not a small objective and not a small um, uh, contribution. Uh, the, the, um, the initiative can also be, and the findings, the, the process that produces the findings can be like a pilot that uh, can be replicated by multi-level networks across policy issues and in other contexts. This, this, this um, demonstration effect that these findings can be produced in this process with this level of rigor and with this ambitious scope, I think can have um, economies of scale and a spillover effects for the wider evaluation community. I also think that um, in this endeavor, um, technology, uh, in the methodological innovation, and artificial intelligence can play a very important role for the future. Thanks, Claudia. You mentioned artificial intelligence there, and that's a big box to unpack. Maybe that can be done through some of the discussion as well. And you also, also mentioned about some of the spillover uh, potential that comes from these synthesis in terms of building the capacity of others to, to use evidence and maybe use synthesis as well. I can see some comments cropping up in the chat about that, so it'd be useful to explore that a bit later during the Q&A. But I'm going to move straight into the next uh, question, which is directed towards Kasem again. Um, so Kasem, you've been involved in many evaluation networks and communities such as Eval MENA and Eval SDGs. So can you share your thoughts on how the coalition can engage evaluation communities and networks and what could be their role in using or ensuring the use of findings? Over to you, Kasem. Thanks, Jeff, again. Uh, again, probably three, uh, three thoughts would, um, would be interesting to uh, uh, to trigger the discussion later on with the <clears throat> with the uh, uh, participants and audience, one is uh, engaging the evolution community up front in uh, some sort of uh, um, of a reflection sessions, reflection moments, if not uh, more structured uh, reference and um, uh, bouncing balls or something of the sort. Um, because at the end of the day, I think uh, and I believe, I mean, for out of experience, uh, I for one can speak of an of a, an experience being uh, engaged in advisory groups and reference groups to. Uh, a couple of uh, um, uh, global uh, evaluation, um, one of which is the synthesis of the SDG 5 uh, managed by UN Women, and the benefit of uh, bringing in uh, uh, expertise into the uh, into the consultation process is monumental, um, because literally it 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 unpack and unleash a couple of uh, issues that might have been um, uh, overlooked probably throughout uh, the process. Um, so uh, either structural, uh, structurally or probably on a on an ad hoc basis, uh, 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 a consultation with those evaluation community at regional, national, and global level uh, would be something uh, very needed. Uh, I would say. I mean, the the use of it would also um, or capitalizing on the <clears throat> on those network is. Um, 
is uh, again opportune in a sense that uh, uh, it would uh, increase the uh, uh, sharing the the learning once uh, during the process and once the process is done once we we compile the synthesis per se um, it would reflect uh, again uh, on the evaluation community on on the areas of focus at the national levels and what they can bring into evaluating um, a similar or a lower le at lower level national evaluation uh, of the SDGs, and most importantly, I would say it it would help translate later on uh, the findings into more uh, useful, targeted, um, uh, concise uh, either um, uh, sorts of uh, messages or probably uh, guides. And I would speak also to an experience uh, within the SDG network, whereby, uh, in addition to series of uh, of uh, short publications, succinct publication, uh, we were, uh, um, I mean, we were lucky to, and we, we put a lot of effort in developing a guide uh, targeting the commissioner on how to develop terms of references and how to lead evaluations at the national level. So, with all the learning that the coalition would bring later on, I would presume that that would amplify later on the uh, the uh, use the um, impact on the commissioners let alone the impact on the on the evaluate on the evaluation community um, so that these are the three kind of uh, issues that i think would be relevant and would push forward in, in engaging those uh, national evo uh, evolution communities at national region and global level thanks kasem yeah some useful considerations there in terms of ampli amplification at a local and national level perhaps we can come back to that in the, the discussion because that's going to be a real challenge um you know for the for the coalition um uh, you know because we're so busy trying to produce these synthesis you know we need to think about what we do at the other end as well so i want to hand it um over to the next question which is directed towards daniel um, and i uh introduced an example of a portal earlier on in the presentation um, and this question is focused on portals. So Daniel, what might the role of evidence portals be in the process of bridging demand for evidence with the production of evidence? Over to you, Daniel. Uh, thanks, Shiv. I think that this ties into a question that uh, Ian um, posted in the, in the chat about, um, you know, political processes and, and how how do we actually tie this effort into uh, the political discussion? And, and, and as I said in the my um, first comments about the initiative, I think this is actually a step forward in trying to bring uh, evidence <clears throat> into um, the broader public discussion. Um, and that in itself, in my view, uh, can help align political incentives. So if people care about it, it's part of the discussion then uh, politicians will be forced in some way to use it. Uh, that's not necessarily, you know, um, uh, the case, uh, you know, always, uh, but it certainly is a push in the right direction. Um, so, so I think definitely globally, it, it is a big challenge to, to get, um, to align political uh, <clears throat> incentives uh with the with the existing evidence and i think it's not a there's no silver bullet and i but i do think that that this effort is one uh one that that goes in in the right direction uh and and that ties in very well with the question about um about evidence uh portals um we need like we need ways of getting this complex thing which is scientific knowledge um out into the public sphere for use and for debate for discussion uh so the, the one of the greatest challenges uh for all of us in the evidence world is for evidence to get used and so one very um uh important hurdle is that people don't understand it you don't you know i mean so if you ask people you know what works or and what doesn't work in crime prevention well people you know will have their opinion and so how can you have to uh even the even the best experts you know in the world might not know everything so you need a play so so evidence portals provide um really good help in 
navigating the complexity of the evidence um, and making and also highlighting how you know where the gaps are and this uh, you know this has also to do with the, my, my previous comment about um, translating evidence from one context to another we you know evidence from one context um, informs our priors when we are working in a different context and that's important in itself that's one thing uh, but it also teaches us about what we don't know what we need to work on what we need to where we have uh, gaps in our knowledge you know as the evidence uh, gap maps that uh, that uh, Shiv showed in his presentation so I think portals are really a great um, a tool to help um help coordinate um a wide range of uh necessities that the public has and you know um put you know in a very uh accessible platform uh what is you know available from what evidence is is out there and what doesn't exist and this also helps align um uh, helps prioritize uh, uh, research questions, which in turn helps uh, the you know uh, production of, of particular evidence. So, so I think that evidence portals have play various roles, and uh, I think they they also offer up an opportunity to help coordinate different um, organizations that are trying to get ev the evidence to to uh, um, to use. So, so that's what I would say uh, about that. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, some really useful points on the importance of portals there, uh, and how that you know how that can be used within a kind of political economy context. And just full disclosure, as a, as a coalition, I mean, the reason we, why we're talking about portals is as a coalition, we're trying to kind of think about how we can use portals as a kind of endpoint of these synthesis initiatives. Okay, so that is, that's the end of the uh, the questions for the for the panelists. Um, I wanted to proceed with asking. Uh, well, we're moving on to the Q and A part of the session, so we have just under fifteen minutes for Q and A. So please do continue posting um, your questions uh, in the chat. Um, I hope I'm not breaking up on my side. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, okay. Um, please continue co posting your questions in the chat or raise your hand if you would like to ask a question in person. Um, in terms of sort of key takeaways from the discussion we had, I just wanted to highlight three things. Um, I think that are real kind of challenges that the coalition is dealing with. And that are also challenges for the synthesis community more broadly. So one is ensuring contextual relevance of synthesis at the global level, making sure that it's relevant at a national and local context. Uh, the other one is thinking about how we can best work in partnership with others to amplify use and impact at the national and local level. So how do we go beyond kind of the coalition? Is, are there, is there like a further circle of engagement with the synthesis community more broadly or the evaluation community more broadly to work together to help uh, ensure that some of these deliberations and consultations and capacity building can occur at the national and local level? Um, and I think there's another point about how evidence can best be considered within a political economy context. We can always present findings, make them accessible. We can create really nice portals. But I think a comment was also made in chat and by Daniel that, you know, um, evidence isn't the only thing that is taken into account when making decisions. And we need to think about the political aspect as well. So just three points from me, um, something to think about. Please consider those and any other points in your questions. Um, so before we move on to open the floor completely, I just wanted to respond to questions in chat first, if that's okay. Um, there is a question um, from, and uh, apologies for my pronunciation here, please feel free to correct me. Uh, uh, uh who is asking about the SDG data focal points in various countries and whether we uh, as a coalition have been engaging with those. So I think there's two points of response to that. One is that uh, member states involved uh, in the coalition 
and as 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 a coalition, we've been talking to um, the valuation departments and 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 data specific uh, departments of different member states in terms of their use of SDG indicators and their own analysis and thinking about how to best incorporate that as a collective effort. And the other point is that, you know, as I said earlier, part of these synthesis is, or at least the initial partnerships uh, synthesis, which is setting a model for future synthesis, is incorporation of a VNR voluntary national report analysis. So um, we're incorporating uh, data from the VNRs uh, and, and we are engaging with the pen holders of VNRs as well. So hopefully that goes some way to answering your questions and please raise your hand if you have any follow-up. Uh, there was a question from Ian, which I think Daniel started uh, uh, to respond to. But Ian asks, um, it seems like uh, what the coalition is doing is a very technical exercise, but many of the constraints to progress and evidence use are connected to political processes competition for resources and embedded systems. Uh, a good example is education, where we can continue to dig ourselves into a hole, ignoring well-established uh, evaluation and research evidence. So I think this is really about the political economy issue that I spoke to. I just wondered if the panelists had any response to that beyond um, uh, what Daniel has already said. Uh, if you allow me, Chip. Please. I think, uh, I mean, this is a very pertinent question indeed. Um, I mean, uh, to me, if, if I can think of the uh, synthesis, it would be it would be a process that links the national uh, with the global, both in terms of the technical uh, findings of the different product that has been done at the national level, elevating them a bit at the at the global level and integrating uh, more of one SDG into the picture as, as elaborated with those pillars, and then um, uh, ensuring that there is a, a loop uh, uh, downward back to the national level with all, not only the learnings, but also probably, and this is probably uh, the uh, key here, is on the how to run um, more or less uh, a comprehensive evaluation of more than one SDG. Um, I mean, what, what we know so far of uh, experience of uh, SDG-related evaluation, um, the example of, of Finland seems to be a, a comprehensive one. The example of Nigeria seems to be focusing on um, uh, one or two SDGs. The example of... Um, Costa Rica, though it was done under uh, more or less uh, climate change uh, 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 scoping, nevertheless, it addresses um, uh, one or two other uh, uh, SDGs. So in a sense, uh, and and in a sense we're 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 uh, we're lacking um, national evaluations that integrate more than one SDG at a time. Uh, given probably this uh, this challenge, I would assume that the uh, synthesis would, uh, while considering those contextual uh, intricacies, would would bring some value in addressing uh, uh, synthesizing uh, the findings of more than one um, evaluation of one SDGs within a context probably and then um, that would bring the knowledge and the, uh, the lessons back to the national level saying this is not only doable but this is uh, it proves to be important because it it captures um, uh, the those interlinkages which we've been uh, literally um, uh, 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 chasing for the last seven years and um, unfortunately we haven't probably um, hit or, or scratch a bit the um, uh, underneath so probably that that would be a way of uh, relaying the national back to the global and then from the global back to the national with the uh, and i would presume the role of both the evaluation community is critical but also the policy makers and policy analyst uh, community is also critical because this is the bunch of people whom we need to influence at the end of the day these are decision makers the resource uh, people with the resources that ultimately would would uh, guide or would uh, commission evaluations if I may put it this way. Thanks, Kassem. We're getting some uh, further questions in the chat. I mean, well, let's, uh, I think it'd be good if people can um, ask in person to get some interactive discussion going. So um, I would like to ask the Dorothy to come forward if you're willing to put your camera on and ask your question in person, please. Hi, yes, uh, thanks very much. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, loud and clear. 
Great. Okay, thanks. Um, I think this is a terrific initiative um, and long overdue in many ways. It would have been great to have this set up right from the beginning. Um, but I guess there's been a lot of talk about use, and that's really uh, good to hear. But I think one of the lessons we're finding from a lot of evaluations, whether synthesis or not, is that you can have findings, you can have recommendations, but the uptake really depends on communicating to a wide audience. The scope of what you're looking at here is massive. Um, and each of the panelists has mentioned a whole range of different stakeholders in different contexts at different levels, um, more academics, some policymakers. So how, you know, a platform helps to provide a repository, but we all know that use needs that into, you know, interaction. So is there a thought of a communication strategy um, that would bring out different uh, products or different events at which the, um, the results can actually um, encourage use? Thank you. Thanks, Dorothy. An important point on the strategy for communicating to different audiences there. We're still kind of working through a lot of that. Um, but I wondered if the panelists have any thoughts on that. Um, perhaps I can direct this towards Daniel. Um, you're working with a lot of different stakeholders in your work. Perhaps you have some thoughts on this. Um, yeah, I think this is uh, definitely essential. Um, I think interagency collaboration in this respect is certainly going to be important. And I think this specific initiative is actually one that can help bring, you know, different agencies together in order to have a coordinated effort to communicate and to push this out through all of, you know, different agencies um, uh, channels. Now, I also think that, I mean, there is, like, if you think about, like in my context, we think about uh, the entire Latin American region as our sort of area of study. So Latin America is that, you know, like the world, very heterogeneous, like it's very different. And political discussion is very, you know, different in each context. So what is relevant in one, you know, in, in one, month in, in Mexico might be very different from what is relevant in Argentina in that same month um, for various reasons. And what we can, I mean, so we, we are trying to uh, begin, we're beginning to think about, you know, whether we can use um, uh, AI tools to have a grasp of how these changing conversations evolve in order to have a signal about where, you know, and where different types of evidence might be most relevant for the public conversation. So this is, ve this is very, um, you know, um, um, you know, very much uh, work in progress at this at this point, and very much is just an I, an idea. But we are we have identified some tools that might can help us uh, in this way, uh, and I and I think there's I mean the, just uh, just interagency collaboration I think is the short term answer uh, for for something like that. Uh, but certainly I think that as we gain better a better grasp of the tools available, we'll be able to do this, uh, I guess, more intelligently is, might, might be the expression. Uh, certainly, I think it's a huge challenge of, of, uh, of our, you know, for our work. Thank you very much. Thanks, Daniel. I'm not glad you have your hand up, but I wanted to, we have two minutes left, so if you allow me, I wanted to let Ian ask a question and perhaps you can react after that. Ian, please come in. Could you unmute yourself, please? You're still muted.
Okay, perhaps whilst you're trying to unmute yourself, Claudia, would you like to come in just to save on time a bit? Um, apologies. Yes, I, I think this, that these concerns you raise, uh, you all raise are very important, but I just want to point out that we cannot expect this type of uh, evaluation synthesis to answer and to answer questions everywhere for everyone and to be immediately useful for all the stakeholders at a multi-level um, scope. I think it's very important that we have a clear sense of the direct influence that is expected at this high level of aggregation of findings for a high level political dialogue and that the effort itself should be conscious about alternative spillovers, potential uses, and communication strategies. One important contribution is not only um, uh, signaling what we know about what works in what circumstance, but also I think this will help identify information gaps that come from asymmetries of power and should be addressed politically at the local and the national level. And this is a job that cannot be done on the evaluation side. It has a political dimension. And I think um, the best effort that can be done is make sure that this information is available, it's uh, readable, it's transparent, and have, you know, uh, fingers crossed for other actors and stakeholders to do this take up in a more organic way. I guess my point is that we cannot anticipate universal take up regardless of the type of knowledge product that we're talking about. We have to be very strategic of where our direct influence is expected and we should aim for that. And the rest should be more organic, decentralized and hopefully um, um, positive and constructive. Thank you. Thanks, Claudia. We're at the end of the hour, but I just wanted to run over a few minutes. If you allow me, it's completely my fault as, as the chair and my, my poor timekeeping. But I wanted to let Ian come in and then perhaps Thanks. Anna, you had your hand up as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Time is very short. I just wanted to convey, I think, another view of evidence. I think that all we said is excellent, but evidence is partly a synthesis and a product, the global knowledge product, which can be shared, disseminated, and interacted with. Evidence is also a frame of mind. It's the way in which we go about business at country level. It is learning and adjusting. It's having sufficient evidence to get something going, and then you build your own evidence as you move along. And you can then bring in the tools and the instruments that you guys are talking about. But this notion of evidence, some sort of global good for somewhere, which will fit in. I think Claudia was making some of the same points. So I do think we have to have a pragmatic, country-specific approach, which is based upon real-life situations of where people, half the time, are mess. It's you know they're muddling through, but muddling through, and let's do it a bit more intelligently. So somehow or other, we have to sort of have multiple interpretations of what is evidence, how it is used, how is it generated, and for whom it's important. Which comes back to my question, the questions for the evidence synthesis, to a large extent, hopefully can be determined at country level by the decision makers in the country, or with the decision makers in the country. Sorry to be long. No, thank you, Ian. I think that reflects Greetings from Senegal. Greetings from Senegal, where I'm thank on the you. National Commission for the Evaluation. Appreciate your input. Thank you. Yes, some important considerations there. Without further ado, I just wanted to hand it over to, to Anna. Anna, you had your hand up earlier. Perhaps you might just want to introduce yourself quickly for full disclosure and 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 uh, and say your what you wanted to say. Thank. Thank you so much, Shiv, and thank you, panel. This has been an incredible uh, exchange. Um, my name is Ana Hauser Suarez. I'm the Chief of Evaluation Synthesis and Lessons in the Independent Evaluation Office of UNDP. And I'm the Executive Secretary for the SDG Synthesis Coalition Secretariat. So um, it's, it's my real pleasure to, to try to wrap up in one minute here and thank Ian, thank Dorothy and all the others that made very, very relevant point other than our you know, uh, uh, distinguished panelists as well. Um, I think one key aspect that I really want to raise is that this is a coalition. This is so important because it's so easy for the UN to get together and do joint evaluations and joint programs and joint initiatives, but it, it's not something of the UN and it's not something of, of member states driven only either. It, it, it has to consider exactly what Dorothy and Ian and others were mentioning, the importance of bringing civil society and the media and, and so many other actors, 
Because in the end of the day, we have excellent experts on synthesis and evaluations around the room. Uh, we're <laughs> preaching to the converted, but what we really need is to ensure that in the end of the, all this five and the ones to come and the portal, the evidence portal, we're still gonna have stamina and support for the uptake of the lessons for the translation of the lessons at country level, at context, at the different contexts that they need to take root to really see action take place, to really see the acceleration of the SDGs or the achievement or the advancement of countries' development. So I want to thank everyone for this opportunity and you know, for my final just five, two minutes, thank you for, for this opportunity to say something and and thank you for your presence. I hope we continue this conversation. We will be presenting the preliminary findings of the very first synthesis in July to the High Level Political Forum in New York. Um, there will be other opportunities uh, to engage everyone from government level to civil society, to experts in different levels. And the very first one will be delivered to the SDG Summit. That's our goal. The partnership pillar synthesis will be uh, delivered to the SDG summit of the UN General Assembly and all the other four pillars to the summit of the future in 2024. So I welcome all of you to become part of this coalition and take space, take voice and help us really bring civil society, bring media, develop a strategy to really get this uh, lessons to be uptaken by the ones that can really promote change. We're merely evaluators and synthesis experts. We need the help of the politicians and the ones that can really uh, implement change. And I'm really sorry, my, my partner, Carrie, uh, had technical, technical problems, but I appreciate her, her all her work and everybody, Shiv, all that put this together. Fantastic job. It was Thank a you. pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Anna, for those wise words. So an important message there on how you can engage. So this, this challenge of contextualizing and engaging at the national and local level is a real challenge for us. But I think we, I want to put the challenge out there to those in the audience and those who are interested in this work to help us kind of go that additional step to expand that circle. So you'll see in the chat that we put in some ways to engage with the coalition. We put the link into the SDG Coalition website. You can contact us on the SDG Coalition email. I'm really sorry that we went over time, not too bad, six or seven minutes over time, could be worse. And I'm really, really sorry that we didn't get to uh, all the individual comments in the chat. I will follow up on some of those comments and we'll try and get some responses. But please do continue engaging with us on this, uh, on the email um, uh, address or the website that we've uh, shared. Uh, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that are coming up. We will be presenting the initial findings of the partnerships pillar synthesis at the upcoming HLPF as a side event. So keep your eye out for that for those who are able to attend the HLPF events. We're also organizing a VNR lab, which is part of the broader HLPF program on the 12th of July. Um, so keep an eye on the website for further events. Do keep engaging. Please do get in touch and help us with some of these real issues. I wanted to thank Daniel, Kassem, Claudia for their really, really useful insights and for taking the time to join today as panelists. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. And sorry if I've kept you from, um, from meetings that follow this. And to Kerry as well, really sorry, Kerry, that your connection uh, didn't work. Hopefully I, I uh, was a good substitute, <laughs> spontaneous substitute. And thank you, everyone. I'll let you all job, go. Shiv. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Thank you so and, much. And, and right, do keep you. in touch. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Good luck.